Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about supporting stomach acid as a way to support the digestive process and overall gut health. Now in my previous video I talked about the five endogenous defence mechanisms that we all have that are essentially mechanisms or processes that prevent SIBO from occurring and one of them was stomach acid. So in this video, I want to sort of expand on this endogenous defense mechanism, i.e. stomach acid. And I want to talk about the at-home test that you can do as a way to understand whether you have hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid. Now, before we dive into the very basic protocol that has been discussed in the literature, let's just touch on a couple of things again. First things first, stomach acid is an essential initiator of ongoing digestive processes. And what I mean by that is we need an appropriate acidity in the stomach so that acidic food enters the small intestine and triggers the, the ongoing digestive process, which is the release of pancreatic juices and enzymes from the pancreas and bile from the gallbladder. So if we don't have appropriate levels of stomach acid, we cannot have optimal digestion when it comes to the protein being digested in your stomach by the stomach acid, or the digestion of fats via bile in the small intestine, and the digestion of really proteins, carbs, and fats from the pancreatic enzymes in the small intestine as well. There is this sequence of events that has to take place for optimal digestion. And then we can start to consider how low stomach acid might contribute to things like gallstones or gall sludge, might contribute to certainly suboptimal pancreatic elastase, which is a marker that is in our gut health test and is also a marker that um, GPs can run within their surgeries if someone is struggling with chronic gut issues as well. It's a very well-researched conventional marker around pancreatic function and, and digestive enzyme production. We also briefly discussed in the previous video how stomach acid is also there to kill off bacteria and microorganisms that we're being exposed to via both food, potentially the water we're drinking, and also the bacteria in our mouth that we are swallowing in saliva. So there is this defense mechanism that stomach acid plays. The final thing I just want to touch on, which I find quite interesting, is there is some research that actually suggests that our stomach acidity doesn't really decline that much with age, which is then therefore, if true, and according to some research, obviously that is true, then there is this kind of misconception and a bit of a myth that the older we get, the more likely it is that we have low stomach acid. That's not strictly true it's going to be significantly influenced by how well we have aged, basically, as so many of these things are when we're talking about the aging process. Um, what we do see in the research, though, is that the period of time between eating and the pH returning to its baseline slows with the aging process. And what I mean by that is, the stomach has the lowest pH in between meals. So in a fasted state, hopefully, your stomach pH is something like between one and three. You have something to eat, the pH increases, it becomes less acidic because you've got all of that food now in the mix as well. And then as that food obviously starts to leave the stomach, the pH starts to drop back down and we have that pH between them something like one and three. Now, as we get older, that the period of time that it drops back down to baseline, it enhances, it lengthens. And therefore, we're at greater risk of perhaps suboptimal protein digestion, um, nutrient deficiencies like B12, calcium and iron. And you could even therefore start to speculate that maybe a longevity supplement that no one talks about is betaine hydrochloride, which is the supplement that we're talking about in this video. So just a little bit of kind of background and hopefully interesting information. So how can we do this at home test to test for our stomach acid levels? It's very simple. You need to go and buy yourself some betaine hydrochloride. I'll put a link in the video below to the one that I often use and have used on myself as well. 
Um, but the protocol is really anywhere between 250 and 750 milligrams of betaine hydrochloride. And um, ideally, this supplement should also contain some pepsin as well. So when you're buying your product, if you're going to try this at home, uh, make sure that it's a betaine hydrochloride and pepsin product. And the protocol is so simple. You take one capsule of your betaine hydrochloride with a meal that contains protein. You know, ideally that means breakfast, lunch or dinner. Now, if you don't notice any reaction, if you don't notice a warmth in your stomach or perhaps even a burning sensation in the stomach, it indicates that you do not have adequate stomach acid. And the idea goes is, Maybe the following day, you take two capsules of betaine hydrochloride. And again, if you don't notice any reaction, like that warmth or burning sensation in the stomach, the following day, you would go to three capsules. And, you know, I got taught back in the day that you can go up to eight capsules. I never really go over three capsules with clients. I would prefer to increase the amount of betaine hydrochloride in the capsule by getting a product that has more like 750 milligrams of betaine hydrochloride in each capsule. Otherwise, you know, no one wants to be popping eight capsules every meal um, of the day. So let's just say you get to three capsules, you haven't noticed any burning sensation or warmth, you absolutely have compromised stomach acids, you would then stay at that dose for a period of time moving forward, which means you're gonna be supporting that digestive process. Now, what should happen and will happen certainly in people that only have a minor to moderate imbalance within this function is you will actually start to notice that you experience a bit of a warm burning sensation. That might be a month later, it could be three months later, whenever that is, you would then drop down to the previous dose, which obviously in this case would be two capsules of betaine hydrochloride. And you stay at two capsules until you start to notice that warm or burning sensation, you drop down to one and you're kind of weaning yourself off. And we do have research in humans showing us that you can sort of reacidify the stomach through this sort of protocol. We just don't know how really how long it will be and we don't know what dose you will need without going through this sort of process. Now, if you take one capsule of betaine hydrochloride and pepsin at your very first meal and you do experience a burning, uncomfortable sensation, obviously it means you've got adequate levels of stomach acid and you don't need to supplement, but you will be able to kind of negate that very quickly either by just eating more or by having a little bit of milk or essentially any drink, but you can also take a, a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and some water or milk or juice, um, and that will really start to neutralize the excess acids, and that means that the symptom will very quickly start to subside. Now, it's really important to appreciate that this is not something you should do if you have a peptic ulcer and therefore even if you suspect or you are concerned that you have a peptic ulcer please do not try this um, it might be worth in that situation speaking with a health professional beforehand but you could cause far more harm than good by trying this if you had a sort of an active ulcer there but that is the betaine hydrochloride at home test that you can do that will really confirm whether you have low stomach acids. And if you do, you can basically guarantee that that is contributing to any gut symptoms that you are experiencing. Now, bear in mind that stomach acid isn't just essential for the digestive process. As we just touched on earlier, it's essential for the optimal digestion and absorption of key nutrients, including iron and B12. So if you had some blood testing done and you had low iron and low ferritin, which is kind of our stored iron, or and you struggle with low uh, vitamin B12 levels, that's further evidence that you have low stomach acid that is not only impacting your gut health, but is now impacting your nutrient status and systemic health. Because both iron and vitamin B12 are fundamental to energy production. So you may well be experiencing a little bit of fatigue, for example, or perhaps a loss of fatigue as a result of those nutrient deficiencies. And you're never going to be able to optimize those nutrients without supplement, ongoing supplementation 
unless you address the pH in the stomach. So betaine hydrochloride and pepsin can be a really, really helpful product for a lot of people. There are going to be times, and I do think quite a lot of times, where it's not going to fix the underlying issue on its own. It can do sometimes. There are clients that will find that they can wean themselves off and then they have optimal pH in the stomach as a result of going through this process. But there are others whereby there may well be another underlying imbalance which is driving the low stomach acid in the first place. I mean, that could just be chronic stress. If you haven't dealt with the stress and that dysregulated nervous system, you're likely never going to be able to rebalance the pH within the stomach. Or if you have an autoimmune condition that can affect the parietal cells in the stomach, which are the cells that produce stomach acid, you will not be able to go through this process successfully. You would have to maintain a degree of betaine hydrochloride supplementation until you understand that a little bit more. Now, there is a test you can do to look at um, that sort of autoimmune process where we're looking at antibodies to the parietal cells to see whether there is an sort of an autoimmune stomach condition going on. And then again, that opens up a different route that you need to go down. And I'll do a separate video on this um, if you were to really improve gut function long term. Um, bitters can also be helpful in stimulating stomach acid production to some degree. It's thought that bitter receptors in our mouth can actually support the stimulation of stomach acid. So bitters are another supplement that can be quite helpful from this process. And again, I will add a link to my preferred bitters product that a lot of people do respond really well to. Bitters won't just support stomach acid, they will also support the production and flow of bile. And in our previous video, we talked about the importance of bile for the digestion of your fats, but also for its antimicrobial properties and also for its motility properties. It can support the rate at which food is traveling through that small intestine. So I hope that has been helpful in explaining the betaine hydrochloride challenge test that you can do at home. If you have experience doing this, I would love you to share what you're happy to share in the comments. If you've got any questions, then obviously leave a comment below as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But this is a very simple way of just understanding, is this foundational piece of gut health something that you need to be focused on over the coming weeks and months? Or actually, can you tick the box and not have to worry about stomach pH? As I say, any questions, let me know. I hope this has been helpful and I'll be back soon with another video.